Hi guys, Squirrel here. This is an exciting day for you Volvo fans. Eurotruck 1.7. It's currently out in the beta. You can actually access it on Steam if you want to. The big thing with 1.7 is the brand new Volvo. As you can see, this is the Volvo FH Classic now. Volvo's own terminology. This is now called the FH Classic. And over here is this shiny new beast, the Volvo FH 2014. I think this has got Truck of the Year 2014. Always found that interesting, given that you're in October 2013, that you get Truck of the Year for the next year, but we'll not debate that one. Let's have a look at this thing. Uh, we're going to have a look at the outside, have a look at the customization, and then a look on the inside. Then we're going to take it outside to the paint shop, where I've got a little bit of something to show you, and then we'll take it for a quick spin. Right, so as you can see, this is the basic. This is the sleeper, but you know, for a starting out truck... If you're starting out in your truck, and this is the first truck you can afford, I'd say that is, you can't, you know, seriously, that's a good looking truck for what, 80 grand, 82 grand? If I was just starting out in your truck now, I think I'd probably save up and get one of these, <laughs> just because it looks good for 82 grand. But it doesn't just stop there, it goes on to the Globetrotter. The Globetrotter, of course, you pop up here. Now, you do get the sunroof on the basic sleeper. But when you pop up on the uh, globe shot, you get a ton more headroom. Inside, as you'll see in a second, that gives you some more storage options up here above the uh, the windshield. And then if you go XL, you get the extra aerodynamic fairing. Obviously pushes the air around the side of the trailer. That's the whole point of that. Um, and I think that looks nice. I have to admit, that looks nice. If we have a look at the uh, chassis options... Now you can see at the moment I've got the 4x2, this this frame here, let's just uh, cover that frame a second. When you've got the 4x2, you have the option of uh, exposed fuel tanks, shall we say, or the simple side protection, and that is purely a practical thing, there's nothing, there's nothing nice about that, it's just a couple of bars, but it obviously does give very good protection against knocks on the fuel tank, but if, you, if you're... Uh, Picky about the way your truck looks. I'm pretty certain that you'd want this. The full protection side skirts. And they do look nice. Colour coded. Just what you want. Just what you want, I think. If you then go up to 6x2, you completely lose those options. As you see, if you go back here, you have no options available to cover those fuel tanks. They're now exposed. That's the price you pay when you go 6x2 or 6x4. Sorry, 6x2-4, I should say. 2-4, of course, is the two, the two wheels on the inner axis. Axle, axis, good god, and then the four on the back here, and the six by four is a straight up four tires, four tires, and then two on the front. It does look good, I have to say, but when you do go six by four, you do get the smaller fuel tank. So, this is a better option if you want to basically go long haul. This is a better option if you want to take a lot more load and you need the extra axles here to take the, take the strain. But with 4x2, I would prefer myself to go with the side skirts. That's the options I would go for. Now then, going onto the engine. The engines, I had actually had a look on the Volvo website, and they do actually, the, the range is quite accurate. 420 all the way up to 750. The interesting thing to note about the engine range is when you get to, now pay attention to the black grille on the front, which I looks, think looks quite nice. But when you hit the 540, there's a crossover option here. The, there's two 540 options. Uh, there's a difference of about, well, in this 200 pounds or so. Um, hardly any practical difference. There's like 50 newton meters of difference. But it goes from the black to the chrome. And I can't decide which one I prefer. Given that you've got all of this black trim here, I kind of feel that that black works quite nicely. But then if you want a black truck, then you'll probably want to go for the silver trim. However, basically, you get no option over this. You, you only get to go from 540 onwards to 750. You're having the silver air intake and no option to change it. Would have been nice to have that option, but it doesn't appear um, as an option. Certainly in here, I couldn't find any option to change that. So I'm guessing it's, it's just the way it is. It's the way Volvo do it. If you go 550 upwards, you get the silver air intake. I don't know if there's a practical reason for that or it's just purely cosmetic. Um, but I'm certainly going to go for the 750, get the nice 750 written down the side here. A bit like the Scania down the front of the R640 and so on. Volvo do it down the side there, so 750. 
In terms of transmission, two options really. Um, the eye shift and the eye shift retarder. I'm going to go with the retarder. I like having the transmission retarder, but with the steering wheel, I can then control descents down a hill with all the weight on the back. Uh, so that just depends on your configuration and whether you use the retarder or not. You can turn on automatic retarder, but you know, I prefer to do it manually. Inside, we get pretty much no options whatsoever, um, but it is a beautiful truck to be inside. It's well thought out. It's clean. It's very modern. I would prefer some options around this kind of cream trim here, but we don't get any. Again, is this standard uh, Volvo? You know, there's no other options. Or is it just a Euro truck thing? I don't know. Maybe they'll release some more trim colors in the future. Now, I actually had a look at the photographs of the inside of a Volvo FH, and it is pretty accurate. Even down to these things here, the reading lights and the storage boxes I was telling you about up here. Actually, on the photo I saw, there was a television up here, but I'm pretty certain that's an optional extra. Uh, there's no TV on this one. Um, looking down at the at the dashboard for a second, we can see it's got full Bluetooth phone integration. It's a bit of a giveaway here. That's the parking brake there. It's just a very small handle that you pull forward to engage. Actually, it just doesn't even pull. It just kind of... You, you pull it a little bit, and then the light comes on, and that's the brake. This here actually comes out. This is the drinks holder. And you get storage boxes under there for the driver as well as some space to just put your coat or whatever you want to chuck there. Um, lots of buttons, air conditioning, lots of controls on the hands-free kit controls going on there. And um, very nicely laid out, I have to say. Does look very fresh, very modern. Would be a very nice truck to drive. Love the digital display, which we'll take a look at when we get inside the truck later. Very high visibility, lots of glass, not as much as, say, Renault, which is quite renowned for having stupid amounts of glass. But I would say, you know, even the pillars here don't really block your vision very much. And, uh, yeah, the grab handle for, for when you're getting back inside. Nice, I would say. Very nice interior. Outside we'll cover in a second in terms of the skin. But let's just have a look at the trim options. Up on top, of course, we get the, the standard bonfire or space beacons. Uh, or you can, of course, go for one of the light bars, and if you go for the sort of bigger light bar, you can then, you know, put your put your beacons over here. Doesn't really matter what you do, as long as you put some beacons. That's, of course, if you're playing it, you know, more of a sim, where when you're taking the heavy oversized loads, you put your beacon lights on, which is what I like to do. Um, apart from that, it's it's the normal thing. It's the you know the lights down the front here, whatever styling you want to go for. Um, like that plenty of lights so that we can blind the AI cars who then flashes um, and I like to put my sort of air horns down at the back there you know I covered this in the last video in the 1.6 video I remapped my horn button to use the air horns and if you stick some air horns on top it's much better than the default horn I don't know why you would not do it let's have a look at the sun visors this is the default sun visor, which is obviously the two-tone, which comes with paint trim. Uh, we can, of course, change it for, well, whatever you like, standard sort of stuff here. If you want to go for the full paint option, that's the stock one. Nothing that you really haven't seen before. Whatever styling you prefer, it's just purely cosmetic. On the mirror side, again, we've got the plastic option, but that is nicer than a standard plastic mirror, which is normally just black. Um like that but this is the two-tone and then you can go up to the chrome personally I mean if you're going 540 up I'd probably go chrome because it matches the chrome radiator but if you've not if you've got the black then I'd be tempted to just drop back and get the matching paint up to you same thing with the handlebars I'd probably go chrome you want you know chrome mirror chrome handlebar chrome radiator that kind of thing and then down to the front, what have you got? Well, you've got your usual array of bull bars. I think that is disgusting. I would never put that on. I think it spoils the effect. It's a bit like the, you know, I how I roll in my Scania. I like, you know, I like to leave a lot of the stock radiator showing. Um, again, not all of these things fit in with the, the radiator shape and the layout. Purely cosmetics. I mean, that kind of works. Um, that, practical, but kind of ruins it. That isn't so bad. Uh, it's down to you. You know, it's it's the usual thing. It's it's purely cosmetic. There's no change here. You know, I can't see any Volvo specific bull bars. That I I find a little bit nasty. 
But, you know, you might want to just keep it simple like this, for example. Given that you've put all your lights up here, you might not want so many lights down here. Just, just go for the kind of smaller trim lights like this, maybe. You know, up to you. Maybe like that. Sometimes you can just overkill it and it, and it looks worse when you put you just put lights everywhere and it looks horrible. The trick is leaving space. The trick is in making it look nice by what you don't put in. Yeah, that's that's my view anyway. So again, down to the lower grill guards. I've I've always found these things disgusting, <laughs> spoiling the view. Trying to find something that matches this this radiator here. Uh, that's not so bad, I don't think. That, I, I've always liked the Sting, purely because of this kind of... It gives this subtle uh, upward effect in the middle. And I think that looks quite nice. And then I like to sort of decorate it. You know, you can put some, some lights along the bottom here. To, to whatever taste you've got. Uh, maybe some orange around the outside. Some whites down the inside. Like that. Um, you know, and you can see it there. When you, once you click away, you can see it's quite a nice subtle effect. Looks good with the lights on. Uh, in the dusk, in particular. And like this, we've got Ninja. Ninja. Which gives you this kind of... You can't really tilt the camera down, but you can see this kind of green effect here. Actually, does that change when we do this? No, it doesn't. So, that it looks like you're getting that in green, and that's it. Up to you. I guess it depends on what colour you're going for on your, on your bodywork. Uh, I'll probably just leave it as a Ranger. Wheel trims. Now... This is the standard wheel that you get. It's very, very shiny. It's quite a nice design. Uh, but what else does it look like? You know, if you go with black maybe, or some Goodyear's with the matte. Up to you. Whatever you think works best. I'm just going to leave that on standard. Because I think that looks quite nice. Like the chrome effect. I think it looks quite nice. Exhaust. Just to finish it off down the bottom there, you could have, you know, something like that maybe. That's quite shiny. The Armoured Heat 1. You can, of course, put something different on the other side, but, you know, I wouldn't, personally. I'm symmetric like that. <laughs> Finally, you can go for the stock mirror or the long mirror. Up to you. Depends on how big your um, sun visor is, really. Uh, side mirror is pure stock, and that's just about all the trim you can do on the outside. Let's buy that and have a look. Okay, so here she is, the Volvo FH 2014. I think the first thing we're going to have to do, of course, is paint this thing up. As nice as this is, it's not that great in white. So what does it sound like? Well, let's get inside and have a look around first, shall we? As you can see, nice sun visor up there, lots of light coming in. What does it sound like when you start it up? Pretty straightforward. Not that much difference. I don't know how accurate that is. Now, if we lean forward for a second, let's have a look at this display. Let's put the lights on and probably light up a bit. There we go. So, as you can see here, we've got a time temperature on the left, uh, fuel gauge, that kind of thing speedometer we've got how efficient we're driving there's the green zone there where you want to keep in and then on the right we've got 1400 liters of fuel and then a what looks like a euro sign i think that's going to be an efficiency uh, of fuel consumption press i and we can cycle through the different options obviously the engine temperature water temperature that kind of thing and lots of displays we've got the What's that? The oil pressure and I think the... What's that bottom one? Is that the air pressure? I think that's the air brake pressure. So, you know, you've got a lot of options there. Nicely styled. Let's get over to the paint shop, though, and see what this thing... You'll see the paint options that we've got now. And we've got a little bit of surprise to show you. Because new in Eurotruck 1.7 is something they've never done before. If you actually look in Steam, you'll see that they've got this option to buy a Halloween pack. And I have to say, it's a bit of a new direction for them. It's kind of micro DLC. 
It's not very expensive. The good thing about it, you because you obviously, you know, you can make mods, you can make your own skins. So why would you want to spend, you know, I think it's like one pound fifty or a few dollars. Why would you want to spend that? Well, obviously, it's high quality and it's good fun. But also, when you buy that pack, it's available on all makes of trucks. It's not you don't just get it on the Volvo. Because I actually put it on the scanner as well. You get it on all of the trucks, so you can use these skins on all makes of truck, which is something that you don't normally get with a mod, that's for sure. So what do you get? Well, you get the Halloween pumpkin, which given that we're almost approaching Halloween when I'm making this video, <laughs> it looks really cool. I have to say, I like the little grass thing going on down here on the side. <laughs> Beautiful. Then you've got the crying wolf, which is quite menacing. Not black, if you notice, it's like a very dark brown. Very dark brown with a cream. Very subtle. Fallen agent, angel, I should say. Very nice style, mostly black. Everybody likes a skull, especially in a fire effect. Spider web, which I think looks pretty tasty, actually. I love the kind of neon blue effect going on in that one. And then you've got Flaming Dragon, which I think is a little bit understated. I'd like to have seen that, I don't know, jump out a little bit more. Like this one, it's neon in your face. This one is quite subtle, I think. And then the Grim Reaper. Uh, the Grim Reaper is... Uh, white on top with brown down here, and again the skull effect. Very Halloween, I guess you would say. Personally, I think my favourites here are the pumpkin and the spider web. I think everyday driving, I would like the spider web, but given that we're near Halloween, I'm going to go with the classic pumpkin. Let's have a look at what it looks like on the outside. Let's move the truck into some sunlight over here. Uh, put the brakes on, engine off, let's have a look. And there you go. As ever, in the showroom or in the paint shop, it looks very different. I actually think this looks better when you get it outside. It's a beautiful pumpkin effect. Actually, I think, look at the wheels now. I'm actually changing my mind. I think I would like to see nicer wheels than that. I think that's the worst part of it, the wheels. I thought they would look better, but... Let's just get rid of that. That is a beautiful truck, isn't it? You can't knock this thing. Let's take it for a quick spin. Let's see what it drives like. In typical Volvo fashion, it probably pulls very well. I mean, certainly when I've, whenever I've driven the Volvo, I've had no complaints over the, sh over the sheer pulling power of it. And a 750, 3,500 Newton should not have any problem pulling even something like the 70 ton trailers that you can get in this thing yeah you see the brake come on then the parking brake there you go little tiny little handle that you just have to reach over and grab it's a shame we can't there's no kind of integration in this game to do with the phone like if you've played things like GTA you get mobile phone integration where it'll send you text messages from various contacts you've got there's none of that in this game. But it'd be great because, you know, with this phone integration here, it'd be nice to use it. So, could you see yourself driving this thing? I think if you've got a a Volvo FH Classic, you would... I would I would be amazed if you didn't want to upgrade to this. There's nothing bad about this truck. The Volvos are a very good truck. This is a good-looking Volvo. Um, I think the engine's going to serve you well. Very modern, and it's not truck of the year for no reason, I think. So yeah, I would um, heartily recommend that you get a look at this truck. No matter what you're driving now, I mean, of course, I'll be sticking with my Scania, but I will bring a Volvo FH into Squirrel Logistics for, of course, research purposes and possibly streaming purposes. But yes, that has been a first look review of the Volvo FH. In future videos, I think I'll take it for a proper spin. Put something heavy on the back and we'll see how it performs. That's it from me. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like it. Until then, take care guys. And happy trucking. <laughs>